Thank you, Sharon, and good morning to you all, church family, Family Life Bible Church, and those who've joined us to listen to this morning's devotional. These days of slower pace have given us the gift of being more like Jesus and being more with Jesus. 
If we will reflect on the past week's quarantine for just a small amount of time, we will find that we will be thankful for what we've learned and it might surprise us for the results. I have enjoyed being able to reflect back on these are things that the Lord has spoken to my heart about during these particular times. And I'd like to share with you just about four of those briefly. The first one that I'm personally grateful for is God's grace. Romans 5.20 has become more and dear to my heart than ever. Where sin abounded, grace abounded more. These are intensified days of realizing God's grace to all of us and to me personally. I can worship God in new and fresh ways just thinking about how he has gifted us with alone time with him, being alone with God in deeper ways. The slower pace, the quieter times have been a gift. Whatever happens in this world, I know that God's grace is stronger than ever and he will finish his work in you and in me, in his time, in his way, and for his glory. Secondly, God's presence. Our God is a personal God. What a wonder that God allows his heart to be emotionally identified with men. That in itself is an incredible thing to be thankful for and can be intensified during these days of being grateful. God's love for us is more than a thing. It is God himself. I find myself more aware of the presence of God more than ever. Like your Psalm 23 states, beside still waters, a soul restoring time. This has been an incredible time to be rejoicing and thankful that we can actually hear maybe the inaudible and see the invisible and strengthening of our faith. One of my favorite hymns I'd like to read to you, just the two stanzas of it. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me save that thou art. Thou my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Be thou my wisdom and thou my true word. I ever with thee and thou with me, Lord. Thou my great father, I thy true son. Thou in me dwelling and I in thee one. Being grateful for God's grace. Being grateful for God's presence. Isn't it grand to be able to spend more time with God personally? not just corporately as a church family and body, but individually alone with the Lord. Thirdly, I'm very grateful for God's word. David Tripp offers this prayer. God help me to turn off those destructive messages in my mind by replacing them with your truth. The battlefield of the mind has had far too much time and still does and I have not won that battlefield in my mind but I'm working on it and the awareness of the sword to fight has been most comforting during this battle time for me. Scripture says the entrance of your word gives light. We dwell in a world of darkness and how wonderful it is to be able to hear and to see in light and have the entrance of God's word to fight those destructive messages that come to our minds and rob us of our peace. Fourthly, God's blessings. A time of giving thanks to him. Time to memorize. I have really enjoyed this time of being able to put what some people call it an address to a scripture but the reference to the scripture, such as Romans 5.20, I now know quicker that that's where, where sin abounded, grace abounded more. And this has given us the gift of that opportunity to spend extra time learning God's word. Paul's message in Colossians 1, 9 through 14 have been made richer in their reality to my heart. And I'd like to comment on those just a bit. 
We do not cease to pray for you, says Paul, and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. What an incredible passage. And out of that, here's just a few of the things that I would like to express thanksgiving for and encourage you to do the same. During this season, we have seen all that has happened has been his perfect sovereign will. We are not many sovereigns. It's not about my kingdom come. These times are in God's hands and in his control. And we have actually gained more wisdom and understanding of just how little we are and how meaningless our self-made kingdoms are. We control nothing. Our God has the very seas, the very waters in his hands. This is a rest. This is a comfort. This is a soul restoring to us to know that as Paul prayed, we have new and deeper and richer understanding because we've been given the gift of spending time with him, with God, with the Lord. We have increased in the knowledge, our knowledge of the omnipotence of God, God's power, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is still alive and active. It is being more active in our hearts. We've had time, as Paul prayed, for fruitful works, for good works, Colossians 1.10. Some of those good works, I've been able to tell more people that I love them and that I appreciate them than ever before. Nancy and I have written more cards. We've made more phone calls. We have prayed together more. We have studied together more. We've delivered cookies to our neighbors. We've been thankful for most, well, most everyone in our little world around us. We've been more thankful for them. We've been cherishing our family. We've been praying for our children and our grandchildren and for many of you. Things that we have been able to be deeper and much more rich in our relationships and prayer because of this gift of time. We've had time to be grateful for the physical things around us. How often do you sit and just be grateful for your home, for your surroundings, um, for things that you have memories of in your home, for the outside, for the physical care, for the supplying, how God has met your needs in so many different directions. Colossians 1.11, we've all been strengthened by his glorious power for all patience and long-suffering with joy. How we celebrate this, that we've become more aware even of his glorious power with patience. The whole COVID-19 process has brought us into deeper personal worship, and God has made us for worship. Sin robbed the worship from God, from his rightful place. And by God's grace, even with times like this, that unmerited favor that we do not deserve has brought us to deeper worship, looking forward to corporate worship, not taking for granted all the things that we had been enjoying together as we would learn who God is and what God does. We are learning to not underestimate what God and God can and will do through these times and difficult circumstances. Tozer said, if we would bring back spiritual power to our lives, we must begin to think of God more nearly as he is. We can be so grateful to continue in our faith, 
grounded and steadfast, not moved away from the good news, the good news, the gospel, we will be presented holy and blameless and above reproach in God's sight if we persevere, if we remain true and remain faithful and continue to go on to be strengthened in our inner man by the power of the Spirit. Always the good news first. Always the gospel first. You've heard me say before, and I love the phrase, that the reason for theology is doxology. As God continues to teach us, that brings out that worship to who he is and what he wants to be in our lives. Another favorite hymn of mine is the sands of time are sinking. Let me read just two stanzas to that. The sands of time are sinking, the dawn of heaven breaks. The summer morn I've sighed for, the fair sweet morn awakes. Dark, dark hath been the midnight, but day spring is at hand, and glory, glory dwelleth in Emmanuel's land. The bride eyes not her garment, but her dear bridegroom's face. I will not gaze at glory, but on the king of grace, not at the crown he giveth, but on his pierced hand. The lamb is all the glory of Emmanuel's land. Well, we've looked at God's grace, God's presence, God's word, God's blessings, and God's good news. May I finish this, this time with Psalm 63, verse 1 through 5 and 7 and 8. O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips will praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. Because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. Do you remember the chorus, he's been faithful, faithful to me? Looking back, his love and mercy I see. Though in my heart I have questioned, sometimes failed to believe, yet he's been faithful, faithful to me. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we come to bow in your presence these brief moments to say that we know that you are holy, hallowed be your name. We respect, we love, we cherish, we long for our hearts to be grateful for your grace, for your presence, for your word, for your blessings, and certainly for the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus saves us from ourself, our kingdom, and transports us by the power of the Spirit into the kingdom of your dear Son. Father, we thank you for the, even the difficult times. We thank you for these great times of being still and knowing that you are God. And we offer our lips to praise and thanksgiving. We sing with our heart that we know that Jesus lives because Jesus lives within our souls, within our hearts. We praise you, God, and we worship you. And we thank you that now unto our God, who is able to keep us from falling and will one day present us faultless before the Father with great rejoicing, we give you all praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen.